Well, welcome Minnesota Collegiate Deca to the Meet the Pros workshop session. During this session, DECA members will get tips and tricks to take your competitive game to the next level from former competitors, judges, and business professionals. Before we introduce the pros, let's lay out some ground rules for the, today's call. Uh, there are a series of questions prepared for each pro to answer that I will put towards them as the mon moderator. After all the questions have been answered, members will be able to ask questions of the pros. Uh, this, this session is moderated, so uh, no inappropriate questions will be uh, allowed or anything like that. Uh, in order to ask a question, a member may use the raise hand function and wait to be called on. You may also put your question in the chat and I will read it for our panel of pros. Uh, please wait your turn. We'll allow as many questions as possible in the time allotted here today. Uh, we plan to go until around one o'clock. Inappropriate behavior as determined by the executive director and Minnesota Collegiate Deca policies will result in immediate removal from the session. And with that, we will go ahead and get started. My name is Zach Spohn. I am the president of Collegiate Deca. Last year, I was president of Minnesota Collegiate Deca, and I am here today helping out and tomorrow helping out with uh, Minnesota's virtual uh, state conference. So as part of leading this session, uh, I will go ahead and do that now and allow our pros to go ahead and introduce themselves. On your screen, we have Gage Donovan, Chet Morgan, James Elvidge, and Brianne Nelson. Uh, Gage, you're first on my screen, so I'll go to you first. Tell us who you are, what you're doing now, what events you competed in, and how you share us your entire deck of history. But keep in mind, we're trying to keep this to an hour today. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, I work most recent backwards. Last year, 2020, 2021, uh, I was in Zach's position. I was the International Collegiate Deca President. Year before that, I was Officer at Large along with Chet. Chet was my president. And then the year before that was my first year in Collegiate Deca at Minnesota State University Moorhead. I completed, competed mainly in the business research written event. That is the event that I always competed at in the, at the international conference. Also was, um, did some case studies and my DECA journey started in high school. I had a total of six years in DECA, high school and collegiate. Um, so excited to share a lot of things with you guys today. Thank you, Gage. Uh, Chet, you're next on my screen. Yeah, my name is Chet Morgan. Um, I was kind of, a bit late to the whole DECA game. I was never a part of it in high school. I didn't even hear about it until my sophomore year of college. Um, and there I just kind of got signed up and I really didn't know what I was gonna do a whole lot within um, the organization. Um, but the more I kind of participated, the more I loved it. Um, so I started out as the, uh, as just kind of a member of DECA. Um, I then was the president of St. Cloud State University's chapter. Um, and then in 2019 to 2020, I was the um, state officer, um, state president officer. Um, now I work for US Bank. I'm in the wealth management department. Um, I'm help open global accounts um, for all of our clients, um, which I'm sure we'll get more into later, but that's me. Awesome. Thank you, Chet. Uh, glad you're here. Uh, Brianne, do you want to introduce yourself? There we go. Ah, okay. Hey guys, I'm Brianne. Um, I, oh man, let's date myself now. Um, I have been at Collegiate Deca for years. Um, I was in all four years in college. I knew about it in high school. I never participated in high school, um, but I was a chapter president. I actually founded our chapter, essentially at our, cha at our school. Um, I was a 2010-2011 state officer. Um, I competed in business uh, ethics, business um, to business marketing, HR, entrepreneurship, um, went to nationals all four years in business ethics, HR, and entrepreneurship, um, and actually finished top 12 in the nation for entrepreneurship. And then I joined as an alumni, so that's where I'm currently at now, um, as well as a board member. And what am I doing in my personal life? Um, I actually own my own business. I am a uh, health and wellness coach and I own a nutrition club up in uh, Forest Lake, Minnesota. And um, I've been doing that now for, uh, we just celebrated a year this past January. So I opened it up during a pandemic. So um, I'm just super excited. So I've been in your guys' shoes um, for years. And so I know what it's like to be on that end. And so I'm excited to be here. Thanks. Awesome. 
Thanks, Brianne. Glad you're glad you're with us. And that leaves us with one more pro. James, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Awesome. I just, just got headset, so that's going to be much more conducive to our environment. Uh, good afternoon. My name is James Alvage. Uh, I started out as a Collegiate DECA member back in 2012, uh, served as state president 1314. Uh, I took international champion in sales management and uh, professional sales. So that is that is my dig, right? Um, I currently uh, serve the state association as a member of the board of directors. And uh, I work with uh, Radio Mankato and Linder Digital. So I sell seven radio stations and digital marketing. And I love, love, love it. It's a blast. So I do that here in the Mankato area. Uh, originally from the Twin Cities. Any Twin Cities peeps in here? You got it? No, no, it's got some miles. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm super excited. Uh, I've had a lot of DECA experience. Love, love, love it. I am your uh, judge coordinator. So uh, I per got all the individuals here to do the things that they need to do. And so we are excited. I am very involved. And I think that uh, this group will be a great uh, pro uh, slate for you guys to question. So bring it on. Awesome. Zach, uh, Zach, I'm going to cut you off. I realize I'm the only one that didn't share what I'm currently doing. Yeah, Gage, exact... what are you up? What are you up to these days, huh? Yes, I do the exact opposite thing as James, kind of. I buy media and plan media for my clients. So I'm kind of the intermediary to a client that wants to be on radio or other other multimedia platforms, and I buy from folks like James. So excited to be here as well. Cool. Yeah, I. You, as you all can see, we have a wide array of perspectives when it comes to DECA, competition, and everything in between. Uh, James, specifically, not only is he an uh, international champion, but he also is responsible for recruiting and training all the judges you all are going to interact with at this conference and uh, hopefully uh, get you some awards at the end of things. So I'm sure he'll have some interesting things to share as will everybody else. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, with the first question here. Uh, it's a very, very straightforward, very broad question. How do you mentally or physically prepare for your events? Uh, I can go ahead with Gage first and keep that order. And if uh, anyone wants to bounce in afterwards, feel free, go ahead. I'm happy to make this a conversation rather than uh, just me talking back at you. So Gage? Yes, of course. I think especially this year with a lot of the events that are going to be virtual, you're going to be preparing. We'll start with the physical side of things of how to prepare. Dress fully for success. Don't dress the top half for success. Don't, especially don't do just the bottom half, but really get your full body ready to go. Wear what you would wear if you're going to be walking into a real environment. If possible, I always like to be able to do a little bit of physical movement. Make sure you're standing up. Pretend like you're walking into the room 10, 15 minutes before to really feel like you're actually gonna be interacting with someone to get you mentally in that space. Um, and then talking about the mental side of things, make sure you're always owning who you are in your presentation. If it's a prepared presentation, this is something you've been working on for months, you know it better than anybody else, and especially better than the judge. Even if you slip up a little bit or you're presenting and it goes a little different than how you practice, nobody's gonna know the difference. So just continue to own it and continue to move forward. Second piece of that is if you're doing case study or prepared, if you ever need to just stop for two seconds and breathe, the judge is not even gonna notice. For you, it's gonna feel like an eternity of a break to think and listen like I just did, but they're never even gonna notice. So it's very important to be able to slow down, make sure you center yourself and hit the key points that you're looking for. Yeah, I think that's, that's great, especially that part about not being afraid to slow down and take a pause. Uh, only you know what you're going to say, right? The judge doesn't. So they're not going to notice if you stumble over a couple of couple of phrases you were trying to hit or if they uh, if you uh, ha need to take a pause. Like it, it's, it's, it's your presentation. You're going to notice that way more than anyone else is. Uh, do any other of our pros want to share how they prepare? Chet, go ahead. Yeah, um, so kind of just bouncing off that because Gage had some really good ideas um, and to specifically stick with, you know, this is a new kind of uh, way we're presenting, you know, it's all virtual um, and making anything virtual, it's going to be a little bit less personable, um, which you need to try at really everything you can to connect as well as you possibly can um, with your judge. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, but I mean, you need to bring energy into the room when you're presenting in person. You really need to find a way to um, 
bring energy in when it's on a, a call. Make it as personal as possible. Um, like it's just you and a friend talking back and forth because that's what really is going to be memorable um, for the judge come uh, scoring time. Yeah. I guess James. One thing I'll add to it is, you know, I uh, I would always get super excited, right? And I'm kind of nervous. And so, uh, you know, Gage had suggested maybe kind of walking around, right? Walking into the room like you're getting ready to present. Uh, so sometimes I would work to walk off some of that anxiety, right? Um, also, you know, you're not meeting the judges in person, so you're not going to be shaking their hands. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you my, my truth. Does anyone else's hands get really sweaty when they're really nervous and excited about something? Okay, so what I used to do is I would go into the bathroom and grab a couple extra paper towel and I would shove them in my pocket so that before I would go in to shake the judge's hand, it wasn't a wet sloppy handshake because that's gross and no one likes that, right? So I know that might not serve you well today, uh, but in future endeavors, when you're meeting with someone in person, uh, I found that very helpful so that we don't give them a sloppy handshake uh, or just the walking around trying to get some of that energy out, right? So. Yeah, the, no, no one loves a, no one likes a sloppy handshake for sure. I, that's 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 great advice, even if it doesn't pertain to this conference. Um, ICDC by all accounts is going to be in person, so if you're competing there, um, and you and your 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 palm your palm sweater, uh, the James James has got you covered. Uh, Brianne, do you have anything to add here about how you tips for preparing for competition? Yeah, I think something that the guys missed is sleep. Y'all need sleep. Y'all need to like. <laughs> It's, it's important. Like I did uh, with entrepreneurship, for instance, that's a prepared event. Like you have to prepare like your business plan to give off. And that's a lot of information. Um, but you have to remember that you can only do so much. And if you're not physically giving yourself the sleep and that part and like giving your brain a rest and you're just racking it up, like it's not going to serve you well. And you're not going to do well because you're going to either psych yourself out or you're going to work yourself up to the point where you're not, you're not going to know what you're saying. And you're going to pretty much, you have to be confident in that part, but yeah, you need that mental sleep and then fueling your system. Right. So, you know, even if it's a granola bar and then to give, give you that fuel to go. So anxiety is one thing, but like if you're not physically taking care of yourself, you're not going to serve yourself well in those events either. Yeah, that's great. I think we always talk about when we're preparing, we're thinking about day of and like the actual competition itself. But Brianne makes a good point that the, that you it isn't just a day of thing. There's a, a lot that goes a lot that goes into it to making sure you're uh, the best the best version of yourself that you can be on competition day. Um, this, this next question is adjacently related and uh, to what we talked about. Uh, uh, the question is, do you have any tips or tricks that you use when you're nervous or anxious for competition? I know James and uh, Gage and Chad all sort of hit on that sort of thing. Um, Brianne, if you have anything to add, anything that you do to uh, calm those nerves a little bit? Um, I talk to myself. It sounds weird, but I do. Um, because as much as you can talk yourself out of something, it's just as easy to talk yourself into something. So if that's something like you're, if you're a person that likes, um, like has like that mental checklist of things that kind of gets you like, that's me. Um, but I do a physical one too. So I like to check the boxes. It's just kind of getting yourself to self-talk. Like you're your own like cheerleader, essentially, especially when it's in a virtual setting, like you don't have that energy of everything around you. So I feel like you have to pump yourself up and give yourself that little pep talk. Yeah, that self-talk is huge. I feel like it might be a little bit of stigma around it, but like, what, what are you doing, you weirdo? But I think that that's, that's, that's definitely, that, I, I think that that's important. I think that that's a, a good way to assure yourself. Gage, I saw you unmuted. Do you have something to add? Yeah, I have this, this goes along with what Brian was saying before, but a real tip that I have is don't try and stray too far from your usual routine, right? Every day when you wake up, you get ready for the day, no matter what it is, you're ready to attack that day. Um, one thing Zach can attest to as we were partners many times is I am what you might call addicted to energy drinks. Some people would say day of competition, be super healthy. I always had to have my energy drink to stay on the routine that I already had set to make sure that everything was as consistent as it could be. 
Um, it's just another day you just presented. It's going to be okay. Yeah, that's a uh, good, very good point, Gage. Cheddar, James, you have tips. You t I mean, you both you both sort of ch shared something adjacent. Uh, James, I saw you on mute. I, you know, the, the big thing I would say is just kind of building off what I think we've been hearing, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right, right? And uh, if you can try to self-talk and get yourself to that point of motivation, I also like playing music, okay? Sometimes that can get me into the mood. Uh, but one of the things that I think is so important that I've seen in students time after time after time, the ones who are most confident are the ones who have been practicing, practicing, practicing. Okay, even if you think you've done it 10, 15 times, do it a couple more times. Now, there's a caveat. I'm a firm believer that you should not work on your homework or beat yourself up with something for more than about 45 minutes to an hour without taking a break. Okay, so keep that in mind. But I think really just practicing your presentations um, will help you feel a lot more confident day of. That's great. Chad, I saw you unmuted earlier. Yeah, I'll give you the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, no, and it, as far as nerves go, I mean, everyone is going to be a little different. Um, I know for me, um, I would have to come prepared as I possibly could before um, any presentation was given. Um, but then as when once that presentation was there, um, I found it really helpful to kind of for myself to try to take control of the situation kind of as much as I could um, introduce yourself first um, and then try to make some sort of a small talk. Um, that's just again to connect with you know, another person, um, then it's not, you're just presenting to a judge, you're just talking with another person. It kind of makes the conversation just flow a little bit better um, if you just really start it off as, as best as you can. Yeah, for sure. I think that the there definitely is to some extent a misconception of like your inter interactions with the judge. I feel like the the students that that oftentimes do the best is they're able to not turn it into a conversation, but kind of turn it into a conversation with the judge where it's where there's a there's a back and forth there and you're not just uh, talking at the judge for 10 minutes and then heading out. Um, I think that that's definitely huge. All right, moving off of uh, uh, nerves, uh, what uh, uh, this this next question still still related to competition, obviously. Uh, if you have competed at ICDC, uh, what differences uh, did you notice and how do you recommend preparing for uh, that sort of environment? Uh, obviously, our members, uh, I'm shocked at how, how often I've talked to members and it's like, I've never been to an ICDC or this is my first DECA conference or something similar, but that makes complete sense. Um, April will be the first in-person ICDC in three years by the time it happens. Um, so a lot of, lot of newbies that are going to be experiencing that rush for the first time. So I don't know, Gage or James, if you have something to share about how to prepare yourself for that sort of venue. I saw James unmute mute himself. Go ahead, sir. Okay. So uh, DECA time, right? We should be 15 minutes early to everything. 15 minutes before that or the night before, okay, go find where you're going to be presenting. All right, make sure that you know how to get to the place because I can't tell you how many times I've waited on an elevator and instead taken the stairs um, or perhaps they moved an event that's not as likely, right? But uh, some of these venues that we're at are really big and they might have a little bit of a maze to them. So my recommendation is plan to be 15 minutes early to your event. Right. And uh, look for your event location at least 15, 20 minutes before that, if not the night before, would be even better. So just to make sure you're there and on time and comfortable with finding it, you're not rushing. Right. Yeah, I think that's really great. And, and the second piece is you get to be the top of the top competitors from every association that's at the international conference. So being able to feed off of that energy that everybody else is bringing is, is on top of bringing your own energy. It heightens the competition for everybody, which to me is much more fun. You really get to get the best out of everybody. And then whoever performs the best comes out on top. Um, but really at the international stage, it's not about that, right? It's about being able to put your best foot forward, get some good feedback from judges. Uh, it's going to be judges from across the country. So you'll be able to get some new insights, be able to connect with people. And one key takeaway for anybody that gets to go to internationals this year is never hang out with your chapter too much be able to connect and broaden your um, horizons with people from all sorts of different associations. Uh, I know even to today, when I'm not even uh, necessarily connected to DECA as intimately as I once was, 
I'm still talking to people from across the country, whether it's a quick checkup on Facebook or a text, seeing how they're doing. Uh, it's really cool to have that connection base, especially as you get into the real world of people that are across the country and even across the world uh, at that international conference. Yeah, and I just, uh, I'll add something, and if someone else has something to add at the end of this too, I mean, the, the uh, my, my experience at ICDC is like the, uh, certainly it's a bigger stage and everything that goes along with that, but in the end, like your, your presentation and the mechanics of it and what you're doing is similar, is exactly what you should have been practicing, right? It's the same, same thing. And uh, ultimately recognizing that, that it, uh, it's uh, the, this, that's, it's no, it's only, it's only bigger if you have, uh, uh, it's only bigger if you make it bigger yourself. So uh Chet, Chet and Brianne, if either of you uh, have something to add about your experience there. I saw Brianne on mute first. You can go ahead. Yeah. Um, since I've been pretty much all four years um, and different events too, guys. Actually, my first two years, it was business ethics, but the rest of the years were all different events. Um, I actually, James here, myself, were in HR together one year. Um, and it doesn't matter what event it is, just know your event know what because you get to ultimately choose which event you get to compete at at icdc um and so know it um and state's a great practice towards that however i will say and i always scare people when i say this it's a much larger stage um and it's not to like scare you guys it's just because now you have to think of it as you are competing against like almost like the best of the best in that particular area with all the other states and um, areas that are there. And so that's the cool thing and the networking and everything. And one thing that I saw in all my four years of going to ICDC, like at state, you're like your school in your chapters, but when you come together, everybody is like one state, which is really cool. Um, and rooting each other on no matter where they were. Um, so if you just know your event and obviously James pointed out, like, make sure you know where you're going because every place is different. Um, and just be confident in yourself. You'll be, and take it in and have fun. I see this is fun. So, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Chet? Yeah, my advice would be to go to ICDC. I never went all four years, so I don't. I have no no advice. Um, it might be you know one of my regrets that I did, but yeah, definitely go. Uh, without a doubt, uh, I love the. It's a it's a experience that uh, un, unmatched. It definitely can change your uh, outlook on uh, what you want to do with your career, what you want to do with. Uh, what you're studying in school and you know, the connections you have the opportunity to make there are uh, can be some of the most beneficial to the rest of your academic career and uh, your professional career after that as well. Uh, speaking of y'all's professional careers, uh, DECA competition, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, the whole point of this is that those skills you're gaining in DECA competition are going to benefit you in the in the, in the real world, in the professional environment. Uh, so I'll start with you, Brianne. How have your competition skills translated to your workplace skills? I mean, I've known you doing a lot of different things and you did a lot of different events too in, uh, in DECA. So figured uh, you, ha you have, might have the most interesting perspective here. Yeah, um, so I started, um, actually my, before I, I own my own business um, and that's what I had said before. And that's where entrepreneurship um, and I competed in that really helped. Um, and I'm a business, you know, I have the business student, I have that background in that, in that area. And so I, I knew about a business plan, but it really helped me to hone in on um, the specifics on what you need to have in order to open up a business. Um, and I, I say anybody can open up, up a business. Anybody can own a business. It's your mindset. And that especially entrepreneurship, it really expanded that and allowed me to um, view things not so political, but a, like just letting me expand and, and go. But really, I also worked six and a half years in human resources. 
in corporate America. And so um, that's actually what my, my master's is in, is HR. And I competed in HR um, through this organization as well and competed at nationals and I loved it. Um, but uh, when the pandemic hit, everything kind of shifted and I was like, why not open up a business now? Um, but those skills that I learned with competing and taking, going through school and all that to lead up to this, it really allowed me to um, explore things a little bit more because when I first started in Collegiate Deca, HR was not on my radar. Um, it wasn't until I started diving into business ethics and B2B marketing and even like retail management, I think, or marketing, I competed in that as well. And um, it allowed me to kind of see where my strengths were um, and, and go from there. So uh, I, I like to view the events as um, kind of a way to, if you're not hundred percent sure on where you wanna go and what direction you want, like play around with them and, and stuff because those cases that you get or even the prepared business portion of it, like they're very similar. If not, they have happened or things that you will encounter in those areas. Um, so it allows you to kind of get a feel before it actually going out into the real world, we'll call it. Yeah. I love, love that perspective, Brianne. I love that. I mean, the, the opportunity that DECA provides you the opportunity to just to try a lot of different things with all those cases. And uh, it's an awesome thing that members should take advantage of. Gage, I see you unmuted. So I'm sure you see you something to add. Yes, um, bouncing directly off what Brianne said, I would encourage everybody if you haven't to do a prepared event. The main reason because of that is no matter which prepared event you do, you're tasked to work with the business that's locally in your community. So you get to go in, interview, you have get a connection. Usually you can lean on your professor to get a connection to a local business to be able to work with. You go in, you'll interview with them. Then you'll get a very good perspective of how does their business operate? What's their role? What are the other roles within the company? And it gives you such a broader perspective than whatever the specific um, prepared event is. And it allows you to be able to, again, lean into what you exactly want to do. And the second piece I would say, Chris, I think this it, it sets DECA members ahead of everybody else doing world is it brings the classroom to the boardroom with real world experience and the most important piece is being able to speak to that being able to leverage that and being able to convince the person that's interviewing you that that's actually true right that this is real world experience and I have more experience than just my education or whatever internship that I was in which then puts you above other people that just recently graduated to be able to get into some of those entry-level jobs or even perhaps um, move up to a mid-range job even faster. James? So what I would add to that is, would you rather mess up now when you have judges who understand that you're learning and growing and giving you feedback, or would you rather do it with your first live client in the community, right? So you all are gonna set yourselves ahead from that perspective, having that experience, right? Um, also, I've learned not to give someone a soggy handshake uh, so I just wanted to bring that. I thought it was funny to bring it up again. Um, but you know, I'll tell you, so some of you, depending on your events, you're going to have between one and three judges. Okay. Uh, I would say one of the things that, uh, made me really nervous is the first time that I had four judges, uh, it was a little intimidating. Okay. Um, but I can tell you, I've been in a number of job interviews, uh, where I've had multiple entities there. Uh, for those of you that don't know Jake Ward, but those of you that do, we're going to think this is funny. Jake said, Hey, James, you should come work with me. I said, all right, well, I'll come down and talk to you about the opportunity. Let's do lunch. Long story shorter, I get to the, uh, uh, radio station and suddenly we're not doing lunch. Suddenly his general manager, the regional sales manager and the president and owner of the company, along with Jake, uh, are sitting me down to do an on the spot interview. Uh, and I thought we were just going to lunch to talk about this thing. Okay. And so what I'm trying to portray here, okay, is that these opportunities are going to make you that much more comfortable in those settings. Okay. Uh, it's going to help you know how to interact and feel a little bit better about having a few individuals there. Um, so yeah, I mean, have fun. Uh, try not to make mistakes, but if you do, what's the best part? You're going to get feedback and you're going to be able to learn from them. You're going to get to be able 
you're going to be able to be that much better than the person who didn't have this DACA experience. So, um, yeah, I hope that that helps kind of set a few things there. Yeah, that first of all, that's that's classic Jake. Uh, <laughs> but but also for what James had to say, I mean, like that uh, from the perspective of the you have that opportunity now to practice and make mistakes with those judges. Like, yes, this is a competition, but there's a, there's a way bigger picture here for, for sure. And from that perspective, I don't know why you wouldn't be involved in uh, something like DECA. Uh, Chet, you, you, you have a real world job. You're a successful person. What do you think about this? Yeah. So uh, I really, as far as where I'm at in my career, um, the job I have, I owe it really all to DECA. Um, the reason I started or like kind of signed up for college and went to colleges was because I thought I could get a, you know, piece of paper that said finance and I could wave it around anywhere and get a job. Um, I kind of made it through my, uh, my freshman year. Um, and I kind of just started picking up on things, listening to some of the professors and quickly realized that wasn't going to be the case. Um, and I joined DECA because, I mean, it was really paper deep. I just wanted DECA on my resume. I didn't, wasn't doing it for skills. I wasn't doing it for networking. I just wanted it on there. Um, in my first event, um, I read through the case study. I had no idea anything that I was going to talk about. I had no idea any of the answers. Um, first time ever experiencing it all together. Um, I sat down with uh, a professional and I tried to make it through it. It was an absolute train wreck. I blacked out. I had no idea what I even said. Um, and I made it through. Um, but to go off kind of what James said, you know, that was my first experience talking to a professional in the finance world. Um, and it was a crash and burn, but I'd definitely rather crash and burn in this setting than if that was my first job interview for U.S. Bank, because there's no way I would have ever gotten the job if, <laughs> if that first, you know, interaction was like that. Um, so what's really what I've learned about kind of business and, and the working world all together is it's really just people talking to people, um, whether it's you talking to your coworkers to figure something out, whether you're trying to sell to clients, um, whether it's just a meeting with your manager, you need to be able to communicate really well. Um, and that's kind of the core purpose of DECA is, you know, these case studies where you just talk to people about what you've done. Um, so it's a great place to just try and fail um, because after you're done with this, it's the real world and people don't really, you know, give you a whole lot of chances um, outside of it. Yeah, and I, I, thanks, Chet. And I think we're talking in the context here of the workplace for, for sure. But um, I'll speak as the the student as well. Uh, the, like the things you do in DECA make the things you do in the classroom way easier as well. Uh, to pub, public speaking, working on uh, having a project management, I guess, sort of back, background by being involved in DECA, like uh, it makes it makes that aspect of your academic career uh, easier as well, or at least it certainly has in in my experience. Um, yeah, so the these next sort of questions uh, might be might be a little bit quicker. Uh, the but this first one, and we'll start with you, Gage, uh, as a competitor. What is one lesson you you have learned in your many years of DECA competition that you would like to pass on? Just just one thing, and you can expand on that a little bit as well. Every time you go into a competition, believe that you're going to get first place. If you do get first place, you prove yourself right, and you can do it again the next time. If you don't get first place, that's a reality check, right? Be able to make sure you're more prepared next time. What I always like to do is be able to key in on what are some of the mannerisms of my other competitors as they're going into their competition. Rather than showing up 10 to 15 minutes early, I'm usually kind of scanning the competition area, seeing how everybody else is doing. It's a little bit of an intimidation factor on my part, but it also helps you be able to learn, is there other people that have the similar mindset to be able to take tips from them? So my tip, it goes back to what James was saying about the confidence is be able to bring in that confidence and always believe that you're the best one in the room. All right, and Chet, same question to you, sir. As a competitor, what is one lesson you have learned that you would like to pass on? Uh, definitely, I mean, one lesson um, that I still, you know, use today, something I learned from DECA, um, is that you're going to fail. Um, and like I said earlier, sometimes you'll fail miserably. Um, but what can you learn from it? Because um, the only way to really get good at anything um, is to just learn what you need to get good at and then practice it. Um, you know, you can try to explain to someone how um, any kind of role play goes, but without really getting in there and doing it, you can't kind of take, uh, like reflect on yourself and your own skills to learn from that. 
So it's really just to, to be brave and see what you need to work on after you're done. Yeah, I, I love that. I think that the, the quote I always love was, uh, uh, defeat is not a failure. It's just a setback for what's to come. So, uh, and I think that that goes a, a great, a great platform to really put that into practice. Uh, Absolutely. James. Okay. So uh, I was trying to think about this and uh, kind of got, okay. I would say one of the biggest things that is my takeaway because I was I was going to say the silver lining thing but I think we've kind of beaten that up right like you know Thomas Edison failed how many times before he actually created the light bulb <laughs> right? but there's something there's a silver lining there's something for us to learn from our failures um so I'm trying to come up with something unique here uh I know case in point right now right I feel like just the few second pause I was taking as I'm excited and nervous about what am I going to say felt like almost an hour to me, right? Although <laughs> I'm like, God, that's got to feel like forever for these guys. So kind of back to what we were saying earlier, maybe you just need to take a couple seconds to pause, recenter yourself, start afresh, right? Um, so I guess that would be one of the big things that, that I've taken away from it is that going back to what Chet was saying, we're just people having conversations with people. Right. And so doing some of those things, I think it was Zach earlier who had said, you know, try to have a little bit of conversation with them at the beginning. We're trying to create some rapport. We're trying to get to know them. We're trying to connect with them. Right. And so um, even even uh, even if they don't buy your product, it doesn't mean that they're not going to. They might need a little bit more time to think about it. I think that's a good one I want to share with you guys the judges may not buy your product. And I actually instruct them to be consistent with all of you. So don't freak out if they don't buy your product. What I've seen in the real world, sometimes, you know, a prospect just needs a little time to digest things. Okay. If they're not responding, they're not saying no, they might just need a moment, right? Kind of back to that thing. I'm like, oh, I just need a couple of seconds to think, right? I'm not. So breathe. I'm trying to breathe now. I'm kind of excited about this. Uh, <laughs> breathe, learn from the opportunities, uh, have fun with it. And, uh, you know, the, the judges are probably good just because they didn't buy your product. That's something I always like to tell the, at the Meet the Pros, just because they didn't buy your product or they didn't um, maybe say, yes, they want to go with your plan, depending on your event, right? Doesn't mean you didn't do a good job. Okay. So keep that in mind. Look forward to the scorecards. Look forward to the feedback. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on stage with some glass, right? That's exactly right. Okay. Brianne? So one thing is belief. Um, and that's a big word uh, in a sense where you have to believe in yourself. Um, it's the confidence thing. It goes back to knowing your event. But like, I say this because when I was going through my entrepreneurship and um, I remember, it's funny, she just walked into the room, Kate Rice, for those that know her. Um, I remember sitting there at State and um, I was doing, so my business plan was a dance studio and I walked in and it was all guys. Let's just be real. And I'm, my, my first thought was, oh God, I got to just, I have to go through, explain a dance studio to guys. I have no idea what, and don't really care. That was my assumption. So one, don't assume anything like that. Um, and I remember walking out going, oh, that was bad. That was bad. If I even finished in the top, whatever, like I'll be great. Um, I took first guys in the state. Um, and then I took that to nationals and the same thing happened. I walked in and it was all guys and I'm like, oh God, here we go again. Um, but I can, I finished in the top 12 and I say it because um, you have to believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in what you're saying and presenting, even if you think you just, you have no idea what you're talking about, if you believe it, then you'll be fine. Um, because they don't, there are a lot of these times in these cases and stuff, like you don't, there's no really right or wrong answer. It's your view and your take. So you need to believe in what you what you're saying and believe in how you're presenting it because the judges will believe in it. And that's one thing I learned going through specific, specifically entrepreneurship event. That was a big one. 
Yeah, I think that th those are all all great points. And I have my my final sort of teed up question here for you all. And uh, I'll we'll go in the same order here. So Gage, I'll direct to you off the top. Uh, in your opinion, I know you've never judged before, or maybe you have. You've judged before. Yeah, you've judged before. As, judge as a judge. Yeah, so same difference. As a judge, what sets competitors apart and really wows you? And you can draw on that judge experience. You can draw on that comp competitor experience as well. But what what do you think's the the thing that really can set you apart and really wow you? Wow, wow a judge. Make sure to be different. Usually, if there's a case study or a prepared event, it's going to be pretty clear what the right or assumed answer is. But always be sure to take a different path, whether that's a different way of preparing your visual. Most people are just going to do a PowerPoint. And I was always a paper guy. I would fold them into a little presentation mode and peel them off. And I would have my key points that I had to hit, and I would leave it with the judge. Can't leave anything of monetary value. Papers, not monetary value, so I'd leave it with them. Be able to make sure that there's something that makes you stand out. If it's a prepared event, I was always a big fan of having the posters and being able to stand up and present to them again, rather than just the PowerPoint. So everybody's used to seeing that. Um, so whatever it is, if it's having a different solution to a problem, if it's taking a complete step back. I know one time I had a case study where I was supposed to solve a problem. Um, and I told the judge that I think it's horrible and we should abandon it completely, but here's a new way to use the funds. End up getting first place in that event. Um, just make sure to do something that's unique. That'll make you stand out to the judge while still hitting all of your KPIs. Yeah, and I, I love that. I think especially like I've, I've been told before too, like make sure that you have more than one sort of solution walking into the room because what what what's the game plan if the judge says no that's terrible <laughs> it's like it's like are you are you going to double down or do you have a different sort of path that you can go as well so things think things to think about for sure uh chet uh what what do you think set, sets uh folks apart from in uh for the judge i should say yeah um so i mean as I, this one's kind of a double-edged sword um, so I'm definitely a big numbers guy. Um, and so you always want to have some sort of numbers within your presentation, um, it being, you know, surrounded by business. So you're going to talk about money or um, percents of customers, things like that. Um, and you definitely never want to overwhelm with numbers, because um, if you get way too numbery, like it's easy to get super confused and not be able to follow any of it. Um, but to have some assumed numbers for, you know, just a handful of Kind of topics that you're talking about helps it make it be you know real world um, and that you can show that you know by doing x it's going to affect our customer base by you know whatever um, so it's just nice to see that they took time to actually think about their solutions and how it's going to really affect the bottom line in in whichever way yeah and i, I think that that uh that that's that's definitely useful that being, being able to support support what you're claiming in the in the in the presentation is definitely huge uh brianne i'll go to you next uh what do you think sets uh competitors apart when it comes to uh for a judge okay so this is kind of fun because i have been judging the last couple years um and you know with it so it's kind of it's kind of interesting like the different i feel like the views that you get and takes on different case studies or presentations or the way that people do things. I say confidence in what you're saying. Um, also knowing that you don't have to be 100% correct or right, um, as long as you believe that what you are saying is like the best solution or the best implementation or the best um, whatever it is that you're being asked of in your case. Um, also, um, just fake it till you make it. Um, like if you don't know something, like there have been plenty of times where I'm like, I have no idea how to even come up with this answer from my, from the presenting side, but the judges don't know that we don't know that you don't know. So even if it's something that you come up with out of thin air and you have, I have no idea, but if you can back it up in a way that makes sense, usually that's like, I think, like, oh, they're really thinking out of the box because it's probably something that we as judges would not have thought of. 
Yeah. Love that. Yeah. James, sir. Okay. So here's, here's my thought process on that. Um, I love, love, love what everyone's saying. Uh, I want, I want to caution you all. Uh, with what Brienne was saying. I think Brienne's absolutely right. And, and please take that for, for what it is. But what I want to add to that is sales isn't everything, right? I don't care if you're Chet and finance, right? Or you're me and sales or Brienne and HR. All we're doing is trying to convince somebody to listen to us. Is that fair? People buy from people they know, like, and trust. Get them to know you. Say hello. Introduce yourself. This is who I am, right? Um, but on the trust part, uh, you know, and if you're if you're good at jokes, throw one in there so they like you. That'll definitely make you stand out. If you're not good at comedy, don't do it. Okay, don't because you'll okay. But uh, if you know you're not good at comedy, maybe go practice it in your in your free time, right? Uh, but the third thing, the trust part. This is where I caution you a little bit. You might get a judge who actually does know your presentation. They be may be working in that industry. And so where, where, um, where I think, and, and Brianne, correct me if, if I'm wrong here, what I think you're saying is, you know, if you get stumped with something and you can make a logical connection to why this is the answer, make it up because there's a very thin line, right? We're, we're role playing, we're pretending, but we're also trying to be real. Um, but the biggest thing you don't want to do is lose someone's trust. You don't want to sell distrust. Okay. So if you honestly don't know the answer to that question, one of the biggest things that I love to see out of a student or out of just someone I'm working with is, hey, you know what? That is a really great question. I have an idea, but I'm not certain exactly what the right answer is. So I'm going to get back to you on that. Is that all right? What's your best email? I'll get back to you in the next hour. Is that all right? Or whatever the case is. Bottom line is what I'm trying to say is it, it's gray because we're role playing and we're playing, but be very careful of, of, lying okay because you don't want to sell distrust because then you're going to stick out in a different way not in the way that that you want to so people buy from people they know like and trust and comedy can go a long way does everyone know when a joke becomes a dad joke oh boy when it becomes a parent oh okay God. all right oh, Jesus. <laughs> so 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 here were you were you someone that could wear comedy in james or, or were you were you not it one depends. of those it's hit or miss uh -huh. sometimes you know yeah you gotta know yeah. your audience <laughs> you gotta know your audience <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that that caps all my prepared questions for you all this uh, this afternoon. Uh, if anyone joining us has any questions for our pros this afternoon, you can uh, raise your hand and unmute or you can drop them in the chat and I'd be happy to read them off for you as well. And I'll give give you all a minute or two here to do just that if you would like. It becomes a parent. Give me a break. <laughs> Jose, no, go ahead, no. sir. Yeah, yeah it was, it's, 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 it's a dad joke, yeah. like you said. I liked everything you guys were talking about. And I think you guys kind of went over this, but it was my question to you guys is what is your most memorable experience in DECA? And what was your biggest take? Sure. Anyone want to take? Yeah, go ahead. I won't call on anyone. If anyone has a top of their sure. head, how they want to answer that. I can go first. I'll tell you. Go, go oh, ahead, sorry, James. Gage. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You sure? Okay. For everything that came to my head immediately had this much to do with competition. None of it. Enjoy the conference. Enjoy the time. Enjoy the connections. Um, at, at my final um, high school ICDC, Zach and I were there in Atlanta. Uh, there was a concert that definitely sticks in my head as the most memorable moment because a lot of people got escorted out by the police. It was very cool to not be a part of that group, make some cool connections and be a part of everything that's happening with DECA. Um, so any opportunity you have, sacrifice uh, the sleep, stay up a little bit later. That's most people would disagree with me, but to do the social aspect of things, that'd be my opinion on that. James, you were going to say something earlier. All right, so the, the two things that really come to my mind are when I was elected state president, and actually we were in this building uh, where we're doing production for those of you in TV land, and there's a bank, there's a bank vault downstairs. And um, during the pictures, Jake Ward actually picks me up 
because he's a huge guy and, I'm, and I know him, I, I probably can't tell I'm not the biggest guy in the world. Okay. Uh, so that was really fun. That was personal. That kind of speaks to, I think, the experience that Gage was getting at, right? We were having fun. Uh, and then the other one was taking international champion. Like, and I can tell you, I remember the moment that I was reading the case study for sales managers meeting and I have an automotive background and it was about an oil distribution company who wanted to distribute a new oil. Boy, I knew I was going to win that. Uh, but it was fun. It was exciting. And, and I think just to build back off of what Gage was saying is, is it really is, uh, all of it is, is an experience and, and take some time to get to know people and have fun and network and, and enjoy it. Um, but I guess maybe part of those, those two factors, maybe what I took away from it was um, that, I, that I am capable, that I am competent, that I can be successful. It was a huge um, confidence booster for me, right? So, yeah. Great. Brianne? Yeah, I was just fun. Like it's, it's this, this whole being part of this organization is fun. And you learn a lot about, I feel like yourself. Um, and you get to explore things that you probably, like you would never think you would get to. I mean, even in the classroom, like you take a lot of, depending on whatever your area of study is, you're taking a lot of classes, but then being part of this organization, you take it one step further and you actually get to, I think it was Gage man, pointed it out earlier that you get to take that back and you get to like expand on it um, and explore it. And then you get to really see like, oh, is it something? And you don't, a judge doesn't need to tell you if you're good at it or not. Like they don't need to determine if that's the field you go into, but it helps knowing that, hey, I, you get to compete at nationals and that event you're doing something right and you know something, even if it feels like it's this much. Um, but I will say one of my best memories, um, and I don't know out of these people in the room, James might know. I don't know if he, I don't know if he was there or not, but there was an event and I was part of that event. And was it HR? I wonder, I want to say it was HR. Um, Are we talking Anna? Like, and people were actually getting like the judge had that I had was actually firing people. Like they, <laughs> actually, like, they treated it and I, it could have been business ethics, but, um, they, we came, it might've been ethics. We came out of it, my partner, myself, um, or someone else that was in that same event. We actually came out and we're like, we made it because we had that judge that was firing people. Now we didn't make it in the top 12 to, to the next round, but Hey, we felt good because we did not get fired. So that judge was taking it literal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was fun though. Yeah. Chet, I'll give you the opportunity to have the last word, sir. Yeah. So I would say my best DECA moment. Um, well, like I said, so I, I started my sophomore year of college um, and my first real event that I went to was the Innovation Summit at uh, Mall of America, um, which is a little bit different kind of a competition. Um, you get paired up with two people that you've never, you know, probably haven't met just from different schools, different uh, majors, things like that. Um, and then you do your own case study. Um, so you work as a team um, and then you present. And then that being my first ever uh, conference, I got to Mall of America and I couldn't find the room. I was worried. I didn't even really know what DECA was. I got paired up with people um, that I wasn't really good with working, you know, with random people yet. Um, so then made it through that. Um, I made it through a whole year's worth of conferences and I really started to understand what DECA was about. And fast forward one year, um, I went back to the Innovation Summit and that year I was like, I'm doing it. I'm taking first place in this thing. I understand what it's about. I got paired up with two people who were in my same shoes last year. It was their first conference um, and we took gold there. It was awesome. I got to speak. We got to present our thing in front of everyone um, and we won. And it was cool to see everything come full circle um, and then just kind of manifest it and walking in there like I own the joint. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. And I think I'll, I'll echo a lot of a lot of what everyone said. Like it's the people and the experiences you get that uh, make this organization worthwhile, and it's a big reason why I um, remain involved for so long and why I'm uh, love 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 serving in the roles that I do. 
Uh, but that's our time for today. Thank you, to, uh, Jose, for offering up that question. And uh, most importantly, I want to thank our pros, Gage, Chet, James, Brianne. You all were wonderful and had uh, lots of lots of awesome things to share. Uh, before we leave, we want to let everyone know that this session has been recorded. All conference attendees will be emailed the link with the, once the YouTube video has been uploaded. Um, we're going to get the, the uh, bingo symbol up on the screen for those of you that are uh, participating in that during the conference here. Uh, you should have received your bingo card in an email on Wednesday. Be sure to mark your deck of, deck of bingo card and attend more conferences, more, more sessions rather, for a chance to win Caribou Coffee gift cards. Uh, make sure you take a screenshot of this, uh, of this call to ensure that your, uh, your check on this, this symbol gets gets uh, verified. Uh, and don't forget, our next session will be the opening session live on YouTube today at 1.15 in just 14 short minutes over there. Don't miss our keynote speaker, speaker Nazwa Massad. And thank you for joining us at Meet the Pros. Uh, good luck to everyone competing at the conference. Whoop. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Good luck, all. Thank you.